the third in our series of looking at productivity apps. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Audible Plus. Visit audible.com slash Mac Voices or text Mac Voices to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Remote HQ. Collaborate as if you were in the same room. Visit remotehq.co slash Mac Voices for a free trial and three months free with the code Mac Voices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is part three in a three-part Mac Voices live discussion about productivity tools. We ask our panel to name some of the productivity tools that help them do what they do, and they responded and delivered not only some titles that you probably are familiar with, so you get a little affirmation, but also some titles that you probably have never heard of. I know I never heard of a lot of them, and maybe you can put some of those to use for your own projects or work or whatever you do. So we're going to go right back to the panel for this wrap-up in the third and final part. Brittany? I'd like to hear from Jeff. <laughs> Brittany, you are so funny. <laughs> it's like I do this for a living. Yes. <laughs> she said that like it was true. I'm impressed. No, I, figuring out who didn't get a chance to talk on Zoom and then calling on them. I actually do do that. I know. Uh, that's why it was funny. And Chuck's yeah. like, wait, did I really forget <laughs> to, to ask Jeff? Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't forget Jeff. Did I? Oh, no. okay. Yeah. Oh, you no. totally yeah. did. Yeah. You said oh, David was last. <laughs> it's because oh, there's know too what? many no, Yahoo's no, no. I, on I here. I get it. I just blend into the into the no. paper. <laughs> you know what? No, I know what happened. Now that you say it, I know exactly what happened. Um, Brittany, it's Brittany's fault because she, ch- she turned the camera off for a minute and my screen jumped. And you're right. Oh, I missed it. Jeff. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. No, it's, <laughs> it, it's okay. I, okay. I was just going to... After the show, go and cry and drink, and and uh, <laughs> you can I, drink I now. Well, hey, I, 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 and you're going to do that anyway. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's Tuesday, Jeff. It's Tuesday. Anyway. <laughs> That's true. Go for it, Jeff. I am so sorry. Oh. No, it, it's okay. Um, and if you if you had truly forgotten me after the show, I was going to guilt you into doing <laughs> a show with just me, where we go through tons of my productivity stuff. And no one else's. All right. Well, we, you and I have another thing that we're going to be doing, but that's a whole other discussion. But for this show, what what is uh, what is one of your productivity favorites? Wait, I want to go back to the thing y'all are working on that we don't know anything about yet. No, I don't know what you're talking about, Kelly. Private yeah. secret. Yeah, you, uh, this is not the podcast you were looking, looking for. for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Move along. <laughs> Move along. <laughs> I, I could do my uh, really bad Obi Wan Kenobi impression and see. It's if that too late. Totally I already works. did that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, all right. Um, I, I will just quickly throw out uh, uh, a few things that uh, that no one else has hit that I use, and it's amazing how many things people have already mentioned, in, including having. Uh, a paper notebook handy all the time that uh, I'm using all the time as well. Okay. First up, Workona. If, uh, if, oh, and, and Jim, the way you did like this with your head tells me that, that you're already intrigued. Okay. So uh, Workona is, uh, is a plugin for Chromium, and Chrome-based browsers. I believe it's also available for Firefox now, and they're working on a version for Safari. And uh, what it does is it gives you tab management the way it ought to be, instead of this horrible garbage of let's just run everything across the top, which is so hideously unproductive. So you get a column down the left side of, of your browser window. You can organize all of your tabs into sets and... Uh, and then it will also link in to web services that, that you use all the time if you want it to. And it then takes all of that stuff and synchronizes it between every browser that you have Workona installed in. So I can, uh, I can start in Edge and then decide, okay, I want to uh, hop over to Brave. 
and, uh, and hello, office manager. And, uh, and all of my tabs will be there exactly the way that, that I had them in, uh, in uh, Edge. It's an incredibly useful tool. So, Bracona. Uh, then, TOT, T-O-T. This is a, uh, a little tool that you pop in your menu bar. This is from Icon Factory. And think of it like a, like a quick notes app. But it's, uh, oh, Brittany, I think you'll love this. You, you totally need to check it out. So okay. you, you get, I think it's like, like seven pages. And each one's a different color, so the, so it's all color coded. You just put quick stuff in there. It's not designed to be like a, a huge document editor. And everything that uh, that you put in one of these little notes instantly appears on all of your other devices where you have taught. And uh, and I use this all the time, like every single day, multiple times a day, I'm just throwing quick bits of transient information into taught notes. Or if I'm doing some, uh, uh, some notes on one device where I know I'm going to uh, want to use it somewhere else, like maybe I'm doing research on my iPad, I'll throw stuff into taught. When I sit down at my Mac, all of that stuff is just there waiting for me. Uh, invaluable resource. Then, um, Omni Outliner and Omni Focus, because every big project I do goes into Omni Outliner, and uh, and everything that I'm working on all the time goes into Omni Focus. Also syncs across all my devices. Then um, uh, Airtable, because if you're setting up uh, uh, like complex information that you want to track in an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Doc or, or a Google Sheet, it, it gets stupid complex and it's hard to build uh, relationships between the different elements. And Airtable is designed to be that, uh, that cloud-based relational database thing that people try and use Excel and Google Sheets for. And, uh, and you can do stuff like build forms into it. So if I needed to have, some, have people filling out information for me in a web browser, I can, I can have an Airtable form that they're filling out in their web browser, and it goes directly into whatever my ta Airtable is that I've set up. Uh, one, wonderfully useful, which ties it into Ift and Zapier for all of my online automation. And uh, then, uh, I, you know, that's enough for now. I have plenty more, but that's enough for now. That's that's a pretty good list, Jeff. And um, I mean, there are a number of those that that I agree with you on, but there are also a number. Uh, this, I've, I'm, I'm looking up as a Warcona, I guess is the correct pronunciation. I have not seen this before. So this is one I'm definitely gonna check out. That looks very interesting. It ch uh, totally changed web browser use for me. I mean, yeah, I can swear a lot less too. That's no small trick. I know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's uh, there's one thing that nobody's mentioned that would be my would have been my second choice, and everybody has it, including everybody watching. And it's a great tool, and it's Keynote. Um, Keynote is an awesome productivity tool, and you know, I, I use it for most drawing, you know, not just presentations, but if I need to do a drawing, uh, you know, I just pop into Keynote and it's 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 a it's a great, you know, making diagrams or or general drawing. You know, I, I find I don't even need a drawing program. I just go into Keynote, plus I can keep it organ you know, if I have a project, I keep it organized as different slides. And um, you know, I I, I I have Keynote permanently in my doc. Uh, I, do too. I I I thought I mentioned it. I use it. I use it a little bit before I show here you know, to create a background image. And there goes my secret. No, that's. I mean, I didn't see here we go. That's fascinating because I what I heard Jim say is he's using Keynote as a borderline project manager. Mark's using it as a borderline graphics program. I make animations I, in it. 
Yeah, you can make mm-hmm. animations in it. I mean, it is such a versatile program. It's it's a shame to think of it as just a uh, as just a presentation program. Um, yeah, actually. A more, oh, oh, go no, go, Jim. Sorry. Well, I, I was going to say another thing I do is I use it with ScreenFlow to to do uh, video projects. So I'll, I'll make all the titling in Keynote, and and sometimes animations too, and 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 then bring those into ScreenFlow, and you know it's great. You make you can make you know really easily make these great um, you know uh, videos with with you know titles and animation and stuff, and it's really easy to bring the stuff across. Um, so that's that's sort of my secret weapon for for video stuff. And you can also just export straight out of Keynote as a as a .mov file. Well, that's actually what I do. Is it? Okay. I, I ex- export as an .mov file, then I bring it into ScreenFlow, and then I, I chop it up into uh, I freeze frame pieces of it, in, in a you know I bring it in as a track in ScreenFlow. I, I freeze frame, and that way I have these little chunks that I can stretch, and and fit it in where I, where where I want. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah. It, if if you aren't using Keynote, folks, for whatever reason, you need to go check it out. It's it it is a very powerful program. I wanted to get a couple more here in the chat for the chat from the chat room. Um, let's see. Craig says for analog, he loves the Pano Book by Studio Neat. Anybody familiar with the Pano Book, Kelly? Yeah, it's um, it's laid out uh like the the aspect ratio of it is similar to like a computer screen so it's wider than it is tall so that it sits on your desk and it's like the same sort of shape as like your keyboard is and then um and then that way like writing on it is easier like you know you sort of using it like you're using your computer screen so um they like they do they do all kinds of projects this is the same people that did the um the glyph uh, phone holder bajigger. Sorry to be technical. Mm-hmm. Um, they like this is the same folks that built that, and so um, like they make them really nice. They come with a with a with a slip case and their dot grid, so that like if you're trying to sort of write in a horiz- you know, write w- a, a bunch of words across a horizontal line, like you have the dot grid to guide that. Or if you're trying to lay something out, you can. And um, they give them to you like with a nice slip cover. So like when you're done with it, you can you know put the slip case on it and stick it on the shelf, and you can like you know create this library of of the stuff that you've been doing all this time in your notebook. Um, so like. Mostly it's just a, a really fancy notebook. Um, yeah, and I think one of the selling points is that when you're uh, when you open it, it lies flat or almost flat. Uh, yeah, it's so got it's metal. Not kind of like trying to close on you if you're writing in the middle, which, yeah. you know, being left-handed is a big deal for me. Yep, yeah. Right okay, now I'm intrigued. <laughs> it's the got le- spiral. The left-handed it- part. It's spiral binding, so you don't end up fifty percent of the time trying to, you know, move your hand over the weird binding that isn't going to work for you. So, it makes it very handy. I, that's um, one of the reasons why I've been a, a hardcore moleskin user for so long. Stitch bound, lace yep. flat. Mm. Right yeah, yep. that, that's go. the size that's in my bag. Yep. <laughs> Uh, this is the one that I use for recording uh, each episode of Daily Observations. I had the episode number and who was on and what we talked about for every day. So I write them down in here so that I have, uh, it also makes a very handy index. Like, didn't we talk about that? And I can flip back through and go, not, you know, not lately. Let's see if we've got, you know, let, let's see what else we have we can say about it or something. And so, yeah, I've been keeping track in here for quite a while. Kelly, that's kind of funny because I used a moleskin to keep track of daily observations as well. <laughs> And uh, but if I, I but if I not were to start that. it now, I would probably do it in Airtable so that I could uh, uh, do a search very quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bet that what, that would work really well. Mm. One more from the chat room before we get out of here, um, and that is from Paul, and that's Omnigraph. Um, Omnigraphful. I think he means Omnigraphle. Yeah. I use Omnigraphle okay. all the time, too. Omnigraphle is fantastic. Yeah. Omnigraphle think- just got scripting upgraded, like the hooks for, for scripting and automating things in Omnigraphle is a recent thing. Because Sal... Yeah, they're adding, that to, they're adding that across there. They've got this yeah, JavaScript. Yeah, and I think, I think the most recent Omnigraphle update is the one 
No, OmniPlan is what yeah, I'm Yeah, I think OmniGraffle was the first one they did. Yeah, it's not. Uh, OmniGraffle got a new revision recently, but the thing that I'm thinking of is all of the scripting and everything came to uh, Omni OmniPlan, which got a massive update late last year and includes a bunch of, and includes like the scripting support and all of those things uh, all the way across the board. So um, yeah, Sal was showing off what what kind of stuff you could automate with the Omni scripting platform that, and, and cool stuff that you could do in uh, Omni Planner that you couldn't do before. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Audible Plus. Visit audible.com slash Mac Voices or text Mac Voices to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. Audiobooks is what you think of when you think of Audible, but there's so much more. Original productions, guided fitness and meditation, sleep stories, and podcasts fill out Audible's offerings so that no matter what your interests, no matter what kind of thing you're looking for, Audible is sure to have it. And with their Plus catalog that comes with your membership, you automatically have access to thousands of titles so that when you sign up, you have a huge selection to get you started. With Audible, you can listen anywhere, anytime. Their app gives you access to all of their titles and those that you add to your library and can be downloaded for offline listening. There is even an Audible app for Apple CarPlay, so that you don't need to touch your phone when you're in the car. I've been using Audible for years, so you've got some catching up to do. Start your Audible journey today by visiting audible.com slash macvoices or texting the word Mac Voices to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. That's 30 days of free access to an amazing catalog of content that you're going to love. Audible.com slash Mac Voices or text Mac Voices to 500-500. That's the word Mac Voices and the text 500-500. Thanks to Audible for their support of Mac Voices. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Remote HQ. Collaborate as if you were in the same room. Visit remotehq.co slash macvoices for a free trial and three months free with the code macvoices. If there's one thing that 2020 taught us, it's that collaboration is a key to success in just about any industry. Another thing that 2020 taught us and 2021 continues to remind us is that while it is nice, you don't have to be in the same room to collaborate. In some ways, remote collaboration is more powerful than the in-person variety because you can draw your team from anywhere in the world. And that's where Remote HQ comes in. With Remote HQ, it doesn't matter where or when your team is, they have a customizable digital workspace at the ready. What does customizable mean? You can add apps to your workspace to help your team do what it does. Whiteboards, notepads, even browser windows can all be there, ready to go. And unlike the in-person meetings, Everything can be recorded and archived so that no ideas are lost and everyone knows exactly what's going on. Wondering if all this is for you? Of course it is. But don't take my word for it. Visit remotehq.co slash macvoices for a free trial. Once you've discovered how powerful and easy Remote HQ is, use the code macvoices for three months free. That's remotehq.co slash macvoices, remotehq.co slash Mac Voices for a free trial and three months free when you are ready to bring your team on board by using the code Mac Voices. RemoteHQ.co. Thanks to Remote HQ for their support of Mac Voices. OmniGraffle so, is uh, actually one of my favorite uh, uh, vector creation apps. Mm -hmm. And if I if I need to make uh, uh, vector art where it it's going to be relatively basic and uh, doesn't need something like uh, like Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll create it in OmniGraffle, and then I just select everything, copy it, and then paste it wherever I need it to go, which can also be Keynote, and it's still vector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I used to use OmniGraffle a lot, and but I was fine if I. If I set it down when I came back, I could never remember how to use it. It seemed <laughs> kind of, you know, different from everything. And the stuff I used to do in OmniGraffle, now I just do it straight in Keynote. It's like Keynote is powerful enough and it's got great connector tools and, um, you know, Bezier tools and stuff like that. And, you know, I, for me, it, it, it does everything I need. I didn't, didn't found I didn't need OmniGraffle anymore. 
So if I'm not a designer, what is there a use case for those for me? Network for maps. Omni Graffle? Yeah, it's designed to be a uh, you know like a flowchart and uh, and graph business process graph a uh, thing design tool like like Visio. It was on that. I can't fathom site. what I would be designing. Like I've always uh, been sort of intrigued, but I'm just like I don't know how I what I would use that for. Brittany, oh, the bulk of what I do with it is network maps. Like here's a Mac, here's a Mac, here's a here's a PC, mm-hmm. here's the TV, here's the DVD player, here's the other DVD player, here's the other TV, here's the Apple TV. Um, like here's the amp that has the IP. Like everything with an IP address goes in there. I have a very easy way to see. Like here's the the you know the the modem and the router and all the other gear. Like I have a very easy way to map all of that out and see where things fall over. Yeah. Also great for flowcharts. So yeah, like, yeah. if, if you were to make a flowchart, something like, uh, well, when you see something, it goes into your eyes here, and then it processes over here. And if uh, and if if uh, if it's this sort of thing, then it triggers this part of the brain here or over here. Or, or, or if you're if documenting you're a process I've, for someone. I've, I've yeah. used or if you're and, trying to like organize how a complicated shortcut works and how sort of stuff yeah. flows in yes. and out yeah. it's much like mapping a shortcut mapping the yeah. steps mm. through a shortcut so if mark, you were to use shortcuts as a form of communication it would be that mark what is, what would your use for oh, i've i've used it for you know, two different things one uh just some casual diagrams uh one an extensive project uh, writing a patent application and then another time you're know, planning a remodel of a kitchen you know it's uh the, it has the ability that you can go in and can, you know, if you have things to scale, you can specify you know, lines and lengths uh, to precise uh, sizes so that uh, you can lay it out and you get a good sense of you know, how things will uh, fit together. So uh, uh, it's a very powerful tool. I, unfortunately, I don't have a frequent, I love the tool. I don't have frequent enough applications to use it to say I use it uh, any more than a couple of times a year, but it's, it's a wonderful piece of software. Also handy well, for making infographics. Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted to add that uh, although it is likely that our listener meant um, OmniGraphle, but I did just look it, look it up. And an OmniGraph is apparently a device for converting Morse code signals that are punched on a tape into audio signals used in the training of telegraph operators. So for some people, I'm sure it's an indispensable productivity tool. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's is true. that from Marina? Is that from is that from Omni Group or is that some someone else? Because I think Omni Group once did have a thing called OmniGraph, which you could use to free sketch, you know, diagrams and curves and things, but they discontinued the product. So uh, well, so the the origin of this uh, thing dates back to 1860s. So I don't know if uh, Omni Group was around back then. If it was, I don't I'm think sure Ken made that doing. one. Yeah. I, I, I think Mark's right. I bet, I bet that's what. And it's that one. I'll bet Mark's right. I'll bet that's what the person was referring to on the chat, the Omni program that's discontinued. You know, yeah, Marina, so. what you found is so awesome that uh, I'm overriding Mark and Jim and saying, you are right. And uh, what the person was really talking about yep. was a Morse code translator. And that is awesome. Well, I, I agree <laughs> yes. that that is way cooler. And thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, we and I'm it. sure by the end of the week it'll be on setup. Oh, and I'm sure, oh. yeah. So, you know, we should thank Chuck's dad for creating the program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey guys, we are way over time. Um, but I, I, yeah, I, there's so many, so many comments and, and things have been thrown into the back channel here on the Zoom uh, meet that we're going to have to do this, do a part two of this at some point in the future because there's so many obvious things that weren't picked that, and we could we could stay here for another couple hours. Um, but we're going to get out of here for this time and let's it, let everybody get some sleep and go from there. So let's go around the table, and I promise not to miss Jeff this time. In fact, I'm going to start with Jeff since I feel so bad about overlooking him before. <laughs> Jeff, where can folks find you? I don't know. I, I think I'm just lost somewhere in the mix. I, I <laughs> don't know. Uh, how about Twitter and Instagram? I'm Jay Gambit, both places. Uh, 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 here with you, but when you remember, of course. Chuck, I'm just going to continue to give you a hard time because I love you. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm not going to live this one down for a while. <laughs> 
at, at least for a couple days because that's about the length of my memory span right now. Um, hey, I just did a, a Mac OS Ken and had a lot of fun on that. Uh, there's a second part to uh, Brew and Bites podcast that I did because apparently I can't stop talking. And uh, um, I'm trying to think of all the, the interesting different stuff that I've done just recently. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's enough for now. Okay. That's good. That's good. Forget, forget, forget. Um, <laughs> thanks for being here, Jeff. Uh, Dave Ginsburg, where can we yes. find you? You can find me at in touch with iOS at in touch with iOS.com do the podcast there. Um, I'm also on uh, Wednesday nights with Guy and Warren on the Mac to the Future Go live pod, live cast, uh, and uh, we can hang out there. I'm on the, the Mac show occasionally, and uh, you can also find me as a president of the Apple User Group in Chicago, Suburban Chicago Apple Users. So we've had some great times there, and uh, you also can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Thanks for having me, John. Thank you, David. Miss Kelly Gamont, as if we didn't know. <laughs> You well, you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram as Verso. You can find me over at The Incomparable, where I have a brand new show with Don Melton, where we talk about WandaVision. It's called Maximoff Overdrive. Oh, very nice. That. Listen to that. Very nice. Ten seconds. Very nice. You can okay. also find me at MacObserver.com the rest of the time. So I knew I wasn't going to get that in because I wanted to say, hey, new podcast. So also <laughs> WandaVision because WandaVision is awesome. And as soon as it we're is. done here, I'm going to go record the next episode where we talk about this last Friday's episode of WandaVision. It's going to be awesome. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I do that. And then the rest of the time, I host the Daily Observation podcast over at MacObserver.com. Excellent. Thanks, Kelly. Great to have you as always. Mr. Frank Petrie. Yes, sir. Where can we find you? Uh, let's see. Uh, I write monthly for uh, Screencast Online Magazine. I have my own website, ympnow.com. I'm not used to saying it that way. Uh, and you can find me on the tweets at fpetrie and on Instagram at phranky, Frankie, phonetically. Great. Thanks for being here, Frank. Good to have Thanks you Thanks for having me. Mr. Guy Searle. Hey, yeah, you can uh, send me an email, guy at mymac.com. I can be found on the Twitters, Mac Parrot or Vert Shark. VertShark.com is the website. Guy's Daily Drive, where I drive and talk live on Facebook. The Mac to the Future live cast that I do with David and Lauren. And, of course, the mighty, mighty MyMac.com podcast that has been going on since... 2004, but that uh, Gaz Maz and I have been doing since 2011. Very nice. Thank you for being here. Thank Come, you. Uh, we hope you're back down from uh, orbit by next week. Maybe. 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 Okay. Retro rockets are firing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can tell because, uh, because he's already growing a mullet and uh, yeah. his pants turned into bell bottoms. Yeah, <laughs> I no, never mind. Jim Ray, where, where can folks find you? Um, you can find me professionally at proview.com. Uh, that's P R O V U E.com, kind of unusual spelling. And that's where all the information about Panorama is. And you can email me at jim at proview.com. And it's more personal, but my Twitter is proview jim on Twitter at proview jim. Excellent. Thank you, Jim. Good to have you. Mr. Mark Fuccio, the man with the, with, well, it's not going to be a big dig. It's a big collapse, I guess, behind him. Uh, easiest way to find me is Twitter at Mark Fuccio, M-A-R-K-F-U-C-C-I-O, all lowercase one word, or on LinkedIn as Mark Fuccio. Excellent. Thanks for being here, Mark. Marina, it's great to have you back this time. Where can uh, folks you. find you? Uh, what, what are you up to? Well, folks can find me stuck inside Mac OS Tiger wallpaper. Uh, but otherwise, I'm on Twitter at Marina Appleman, where I sputter opinions about Apple things, uh, Soviet throwbacks, dogs, and other assorted trivia. 
Cool. Okay. That's an interesting mix, but we, we look forward to it. Brittany Smith, nice to have you as always. Thank you where, for having me. Yes. Where, where can folks connect with you? On Twitter, I'm the ADD Liberator, just ADD Liberator. Um, and I did want to plug again my new ADHD guild, running with a, a friend. If you could know somebody who has ADHD, the website is conquer.consulting. And I'm going to be on an upcoming episode of Productivity in Tech, and I'm really excited about that. Recorded it yesterday. Great. Great. Thanks for being here. We, we yeah. are always glad to have you. Thank you. Last but not least, Mr. Jeff Gamut. Oh, no, wait. We already did, Jeff. You want to do it again, Jeff, just to make up? Yeah, um, yeah. I'm Jeff Gamut. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Jay Gamut, both places, and uh, on shows like In Touch with iOS, The Big Show, The Mac Show. How was that, Chuck? That was good. Now I feel much better that you didn't get shortchanged. Okay. <laughs> Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices Live. We do this Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on Facebook and YouTube. We'd love to have you join us, uh, just like all the great folks in the chat room did tonight. There, there were more than uh, we've had so far, so we're slowly building that audience. You could be the next one to join us. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com. And by the way, did you notice how nobody came back to me and said, what's your, what's your pick, Chuck? I wanted to, and then we just kept going. So, hey, Chuck, what's your favorite? What's there your was favorite? like there was like we, something about Morse code. No, you're in charge no, of that, Chuck. We, no, no, I mean, we just late. figured it's, you picked your nose. It's too late. It's, <laughs> oh, and, oh, well, is, after is, Jeff is, didn't is it Crayola pick Crayola red or Crayola orange. <laughs> no, Alcapoco <laughs> gold. I just assumed it was Panorama. See, after Jeff didn't pick it, I assumed Chuck's Chuck's productivity uh, tool was going to be Maker's Mark.